understand the mistake from 2016 and I waiting for the jacket I see a lot of pictures when some other fighters took the jacket now I have to and I will put this jacket in my garderobe and it will be there many years thank you over here uh, to kind of go off of that, uh, he's, Jeff said, you know, it was a mistake back in 2016. Was that knowledge, was that, did that bother you for a long time? And then how, does it, how good does it feel to hear that from Jeff? Honestly, uh, it's bothered me because I'm always with the clean sport and uh, I always happy when the, the test like Usada or other people come to my house find me in the house it's not easy to be in the location always but I always happy when they come when they uh, test the fighters you know because uh, this is sport everything can happen and everybody have to be clean well, looking at your fight if we call you see sports uh, this is mean like everybody have to be in same position in same level and uh, everybody have to be clean well looking at your fight on saturday against dustin um you wanted to fight on this date and dustin was the man up i'm curious did you know at some point you would have to fight dustin considering he's always in the top five at lightweight uh yeah i always thinking about him because he I don't know, all his life in the top, you know, on the top five. And uh, it's my dream fight someone like Dustin, who have big name in this sport. And I'm very happy because he is going to be in my list. Does it also feel good to finally get a lightweight that you, it's not a rematch, you know, you had the two fights against Volkanovski and now you get to fight another lightweight that's also fought for the belt already? Yeah, I don't like the rematch because you don't have new motivation always you need to find some new target new goal but when you have rematch it's same you know same opponent did some like sparring partner the same which one you choose you know that's why i always want to some new name and looking at dustin since his fight against habib how do you think he's grown as a fighter or do you think he's kind of the same just more experienced uh, Honestly, he's the same, you know. Maybe become more old, and he doesn't believe he can beat me. His coach doesn't believe he can beat me. And uh, I know I can make this fight easy. Habib said he's expecting a finish sometime in round two or three. Is that what you're also expecting? Yeah, I will finish him. Because I'm in the different level. I'm a best fighter in the world right now. Sean Strickland was in here and we asked him about his opinion on the new gloves and he didn't like them at all. He said uh, he's curious who designed them and didn't feel like they'd ever been in a fight. Honestly, I don't like to too much because it's become look very old after I using two weeks, you know. And I ask you if you give me new one for the training. In terms of actually how they feel in the fight, how different are they? Uh, feel a little bit, it's more hard, you know. And, uh, but almost same, you know, I think almost same. But uh, when you try to open your finger, it's a little bit difficult. E the new one is keep your finger close a little bit. How many extra rounds of guillotine defense have you done in this training camp, if any? I defended from guillotine today morning. We did some <laughs> drills. Yes, I am not lying. I'm Sure. Islam, you said that you don't believe Dustin thinks he can beat you. So if that's the case, do you believe when he's in there, he might almost try and quit earlier on? Or do you think because it's his last chance at a title, he might fight until the very bitter end? Uh, honestly, my style, it's a war style for him. That's why he can beat some striker. He's he like one of the best striker in this game. But we're not striker. We're MMA fighters and my skills on different level for you i'm sure there must be a temptation that you could try and fight him on the feet and prove that you can beat him in that world but is it your job as the champion to just go in there and win as effectively as possible and do whatever it takes and whatever avenue you need to do that uh yeah i can striking with him but 
I told you guys, if I want to make this fight easy, I know the way. And everybody don't know the way. Always when his opponent pressure him, take him down, he have same problem always. He has said that if he loses this fight for the title, he won't try and climb back to the top again. And it, it, he may be done, in fact, with the sport after that. What would you describe Dustin Poirier's legacy if this was his last fight? How would you describe his legacy in MMA? Uh, I hope he not retired after this fight, and I think he's a he's a he's a one of the biggest name in this sport. You know, that's why I respect him. I respect I respect him here because he have a lot a lot of crazy fights in this sport. You know, and uh, just happy to beat someone who have big name like Dustin, you know, because for the legacy, it's gonna be maybe biggest name in my list. Islam, right here. Uh, Kevin Holland was in here earlier and he was asked about the possibility of you moving up to 170 and he instantly said that, you know, he thinks you would be champ at 170 pounds. What, what do you think of other guys speaking so highly of you already? Uh, that have fought in that division and could we see you up there in the next year yeah i know people understand because for the lightweight belt i can be champion many many years before but the all fighters i think run for me you know i always on all my career have problem fight someone from top 10 top 5 you know they're all high, but but people understand, and all you see, all, all MMA fans understand my skills, and uh, my style is a uh, war style for everybody. I can be two division champion, and I waiting for this chance. Uh, hi, Islam. Uh, Charles is undecided about his future. He doesn't want to face Kamho, and he been challenged by Kobe in the welterweight. What would you advise him to do? Charles, Charles is a good guy. If I can help him one day, he can join with us to the camp, come to Dagestan. He have very good striking, high level grappling. We can help him with the wrestling. Uh, if if he, he faces Kobe, what's your? I think Charles can finish him because Charles, it's a. Uh, very very dangerous guy you know he every second this guy looking for the finish and how many finishes he have i think more than everybody that's why this guy have very very high level skills thank you islam right here um Habib retired after 29 fights this will be your 26th uh have you ever thought about Retiring on top, is that something that you would ever do or? Habib retired because he's not become old. Because his mother all his life miss him in the home because he travel a lot. And, but I feel oh, every camp, I feel I'm improving, you know. When I feel I'm not improved, I'm stay same position or I go down. I don't want to fight, but right now I check my conditions level, everything. Every year I check, you know, and I always improve. But I don't think about retired right now because I have some some target, you know. Actually, one one more, right here. Uh, we saw Dustin Boyer with the custom floral shorts this week. Were you offered custom shorts as well? Uh, I will thinking about this because all this fight have some special short. I will thinking and maybe next fight we will do some. It's on here. here. Uh, you guys had Bilal training in your camp for a little bit there, and he said after working with you that you were the LeBron James of MMA and that Habib is the Michael Jordan of MMA. Uh, what does that mean to you? Uh, Bilal, it's our close friend he always when he have time join to the camp help us and we've helped each other you know he have 
good experience in this sport. He working with uh, Lara, our teams guys, you know, and uh, good them, good advice. And I think maybe he will come to Dagestan for the next fight for the camp because he will fight in Europe, uh, and uh, it's gonna be easy to him for, uh, come from US to Russia, training there a little bit and move to Manchester. If he wins the title, would that change your plans at all for maybe moving up to welterweight if he's able to defend it and hold it for a while? Oh. It's a hard question, but I, I think he can beat Leon because, you know, uh, I saw how he's training. He always did like a lot of drills. He, when he know he's where he's not good like, and he ask Habib, ask other guys who is good in the wrestling or somewhere, and he always want to improve, you know. And uh, if he beat Leon, I don't know. We have to sit with the manager, with the team coaches, and talk about this. And just last thing, um, a little bit of a random question, but why don't you have a nickname? Like Habib's the Eagle, Dustin's the Diamond. Have, has anyone ever tried to give you a nickname? Uh, no, I don't want because everybody have. But this guy, someone have to be without nickname. Yeah. I'm that guy who don't have nickname. Love it. Thank you. What what is the significance to you of having be back in your corner? What what does he bring that you feel you need to, to have him there? This is. This is mean a lot. It's uh, like plus to striking 20%, to wrestling 20%, and to the plane. You know, it's always great to have. I think everybody has that Habib in the corner. You know, because I think he gave me good advice in the uh, Lara fights. With the, I think I remember. I remember with uh, Gleison Tibau. He told me hey, try to land. Uh, left hook I did and I finished him with the uh, with the, the hooker he gave me very good advice when I finished him by armbar uh, with the title fight he gave me a lot of good advice you know and always good to have Habib in the corner and just a quick follow obviously you it's not just for me uh, good news, everybody was happy when Habib say I will be cornered, everybody understand he is going to corner them too and everybody was happy. In general, is there a, a piece of fighting advice he's given you that has stuck with you or that that was the... No, I don't remember one advice, you know, just the program, the discipline which he gave us which his father give him and uh, he just you know now he's a coach and he make everybody training hard follow the same discipline and uh, be patient you know islam right over here in the back what you know, there were a lot of fights where Habib could have come out of retirement and joined the corner and gotten back into the sport with you. But what made, what do you think made him choose this fight to come back into the corner? Uh, because I think, number one, he missed the feeling. And I think he very nervous when he sit in the room and watching the fight, you know. He always take care of us and you know he want to help that's why he's here he's gonna be my call thank you Islam еще один вопрос про Хабиба и его нахождение в углу есть знаменитое видео где он подсказывает работать долбарик работает достаточно эмоционально тебе было бы близко такая манера подсказа или что-то более лайтовое чтобы тебя не нервировало вот как ты обращаешь на это внимание я всегда слушаю своих угловых и стараюсь слушать и не даю им такой возможности нервничать или что-то там слишком кричать, чтобы я услышал. Стараюсь слушать постоянно свой угол.
Another question about Habib and him being in your corner for this fight. There's a very famous video, a viral video, where they show Habib when he's kind of almost yelling at you a little bit about what's the next move, what you have to do. How do you feel about this type of coaching? Uh, do you feel like it's too much pressure on you, or do you, do you prefer more of a light approach? And the answer is, uh, you know, I always try to listen to my corner man. I try to make sure to do what they ask for and not give them any reason to be nervous or to get aggressive. Ислам, еще один вопрос по поводу Парье. Все боятся его гильотины, но при этом он никогда ей не выигрывал. Единственный, не единственный, кто выигрывает часто, это Шавкат Рахмонов. Ты понимаешь разницу между гильотиной Шавката и Парье? И в чем, что делает не так Парье, чтобы выиграть именно этим приемом? Another question about Dustin Poirier and his great guillotine. Uh, a lot of people are afraid of Dustin uh, Poirier's guillotine, but in fact, he has never finished a fight with a guillotine. Unlike Shafkat Rahmanov, who has finished fights with a guillotine. Do you understand the difference between a Poirier guillotine and a Shafkat guillotine? No, I don't understand who is the best. I just need to find the moment. Потому что удушающий именно э, в начале тяжело бывает сделать, но Дастин прыгает в любое время на гильотину. Э, когда он уставший, это вообще плохо идет. Лучше всего, когда ну, сопер... ну может Шавхат больше разбирается в этих моментах. Просто надо понимать вовремя, когда вот гильотина пройдет. Это э, знаешь как, это даже, даже когда ты берешь шею и на руке прилегает к руке шея соперника, ты уже должен понимать, пойдет удушающий или нет, чтобы просто лишний раз силы не терять. Но для этого ты должен очень много времени проводить в этих позициях, чтобы ты начал уже закрытыми глазами это понимать. You know, when it comes to chokes specifically, it's 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 harder to do at the at the beginning of the fight maybe. But when it comes to Dustin, he he'll jump a gu guillotine no matter when. When he's tired specifically, it never is going to work. Uh, maybe Shafkat is just better at timing it. But really, when you when it comes to guillotine, once you get your opponent's neck uh, to to your arm, you should really already understand whether or not you're going to be able to finish it or not. I think that in order for you to be really sure of your guillotine, you just need to be in those positions and practice for uh, a lot of times. So you need to practice it so you kind of. Know it without even having to set it up, you just you just get it automatically. Сестра, еще один вопрос. Не не пробой непосредственно, а такой более жизненный. Вы у вас паре очень мало общего, но при этом есть одно общее. Вы воспитываете дочерей. Как ты думаешь, в будущем ваши дочери могли бы познакомиться, чтобы твоя дочь имела возможность по-английски поговорить и дружить? Question is not really necessarily about the fight, but more about your opponent. So there's a lot of differences between you and Dustin, but there's one thing that kind of connects you, something similar, is that both of you have daughters. In the future, do you think that your daughters could meet and possibly be friends and maybe speak, speak English to each other? Do you think that's something that could happen? Да, может. Если какой-нибудь боец UFC там с Америки приедет в гости Махачкалу, мы обязательно его встретим. Если с семьей приедет, расселим, покажем кавказское гостеприимство. Yeah, of course. I mean, if, if any of the fighters from the UFC want to come to Mahachkalad, they will, we will make sure to greet them, we'll make sure to get them a place to live, we'll show them the, the real caucus uh, welcome. Assalamu alaikum, Islam. Your trainer, Javier Mendes, said that if you were to fight for boxing, then you would have beaten him for boxing. Do you think your boxing has already grown or has it been a little bit increased? Your coach, Javier Mendes, said that even if it was just a boxing match between you and Poirier, your boxing is better than his and you could win him just in boxing specifically. Do you think that your boxing has improved that much or do you think that Javier Mendes is kind of exaggerating a little bit? Ну, я знаю, что я могу с любым соперником драться на равных в стойке, там, там, не знаю, ногами или что-то такое. Но я не считаю себя лучшим боксером или лучшим борцом, лучшим грэплером. Я считаю себя лучшим бойцом ММА на сегодняшний, на сегодняшний день. И из-за этого я могу и бороться, и драться в стойке, и греплить с любым соперником. Я это и показал. Я дрался с Волконовским в стойке, ничем ему не уступая. Я боролся с Оливейрой, у кого есть больше всего финишей. И я по праву себя, себя считаю номер один панфу паун боец. You know, I, I think that if we fight... Uh... 
with anybody, I can be uh, equal whether it comes to stand up or, or any other discipline. Uh, I don't consider myself to be the best uh, boxer or the best grappler or the best wrestler. I consider myself to be the best MMA fighter. So uh, I've proven it before. You know, when we fought with Volkanovsky, we fought in stand up and I did better than him. I grappled with Oliveira, who has the most finishes in grappling. So it's not about what discipline I feel that I'm better at, it's just that I feel that I'm the best. O overall MMA fighter. Ислам, еще один вопрос. Раньше ходили слухи, что Хабиб перестал быть в твоем углу, чтобы не забирать у тебя славу чисто от твоих побед за счет своих прошлых достижений. А в этом бою он опять в твоем углу. Это значит ли то, что на этом бою больше стоит, чем забирать у тебя славу? Uh, you know, there are rumors about Habib uh, not being in your corner anymore because he was going to be taking your shine away. And, and he just wanted you to get all of the accolades and all the shine by, by yourself. This time around, he's back in your corner. Do you think that that means that this fight is more than just him shining over you, that there is much more at stake here than just some sort of popularity? Our команда вообще. Мы никогда даже об этом не разговаривали. Я никогда об этом не думал, чтобы забирать какую-то популярность или мы здесь не для популярности. Мы чтобы друг другу помочь. И если он видит шанс где-то, что он может помочь, может присутствовать, то он будет всегда рядом с нами. Даже когда он не был у нас в углу, он был полностью включен в подготовку, ездил с нами на сборы, помогал нам, секундировал нас на сборах. Ну, он взял просто паузу. Отдохнул и вернулся. Он никуда не уходил просто, он взял паузу, отдохнул от всего этого. Потому что даже если начну объяснять, люди не поймут, сколько он времени провел в поездках, помогая, сам готовился. И из-за этого, я думаю, ему нужна была эта пауза. You know, our team has never had this popularity contest. It's not about who's more popular or who's better known or well known. Our team is together because we're able to help each other, we're we able to encourage each other and, and move each other forward. So Habib was, uh, even when he was retired, even when he was no longer in my corner, he would still come out to camps, he would still be in camp with us, he just never came out to corner us anymore. But for him it wasn't about that, for him it was just about taking a pause, because if I try and explain to you how long and for how long of a time he's been away from from home, from his family, because of his own training, because of helping training other people, he just wasn't present at home for a long, long time, so he needed this pause for himself. It's not about popularity, and now he's able to come back and help me out with this, and I'm grateful for it.